Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Things We Know. Today, we're going to talk about something that is close to our hearts, what it's like to learn something new and really the importance of continuing to learn throughout your life. Here's the funny thing, though. You came up with this topic and it did not even dawn on me until we were recording a pod last week that what was prompted this was me learning Russian. Yeah. I, I, did, I really did not put two and two together. Yeah. Well, because I, I was impressed and so proud of you. And I, and I, you know, I love, I mean, it, it actually made me go back and kind of pick up where I was with Spanish because I had mm. taken French for so many years and I minored in French and um, that, a lot of good that's doing me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've I constantly been like working on Spanish. So it did prompt that for me, but right. also it, it actually made me sweat because I was like, oh, I got into this mindset. This is like such a great example of the stories we tell ourselves. Mm. Lisa's so good at like doing something new. I'm not learning anything new. I'm just like sort of going from thing to thing. And I said that to Beth and she was like, what? You've learned this. You've learned how to podcast. You've learned, you know, you learn all this stuff about Griffin all the time. You practically have your own informal PhD in epilepsy. And I'm like, I guess, I guess I really put it in my mind as like learning a fun new thing (laughs) or learning something really useful. Or Yeah. I, and to me, I think it's funny because yes, Russian is, I suppose the newest thing I'm learning but I think to to me, I wouldn't have thought about, well, we learned how to do a pod. Well, we learned, I mean, I, I, I probably would have to go back to thinking, oh, well, I learned how to become a, a better coach when I went mm-hmm. through the Health Coach Institute. But the reality of it is we do learn things every day. It's just, it's more out of necessity versus, yes. you know, um, actively choosing to learn something fun. Um, I, I chose to learn Russian. I, and I just, I laugh because I still probably can only say about 10 words and I definitely could not, I could barely string them into a sentence. Um, but I learned, I decided to do it because Liam was doing it and he had shared with me at Christmas that Irina's mom, who is Belarusian, so she's from Belarus, speaks English very well. She doesn't think she speaks English well. So she always feels a little nervous to come out and say hi to Darren or I, if we're picking Liam up or dropping him off or something. And that kind of broke my heart. Mm. And because in my mind, I'm like, she speaks English really well. Like I understand her. What, what is she thinking? And then I started to learn Russian. And when I went to speak it to Irina, I was really nervous. And I was, and so if nothing else, it gave me an understanding of what Olga is feeling because uh. I realized it doesn't matter that I know how to say spasibo. I know how to say thank you in Russian. When I went to say it to Irina, I got really nervous. And and so I was like, oh, that's what she's feeling. Right. Anyways, that's why I decided to learn Russian and not Spanish or French or something along those lines. And it has been fun. I, it's I'm really, it has it's been enjoyable. Impressed. It's been super impressed. I mean, yeah, obviously learning something new is exciting and challenging, but I think what we have witnessed, I mean, and actually like these were second careers for a lot of people, right? Like I I was new for me, but we always say like, you're not a beginner, everything that you've learned in something else you can bring to the next thing, but it does keep our minds sharp. And like the way I realized that is, it's not like I needed to learn how to do a crossword, but I've learned how to complete the New York times crossword puzzle every day. And that took learning. Tell me about that. Like, that's interesting to me. What, what is it about doing the crossword that you had to learn? Like, is there a way because, of doing it? I mean, I think that like you, that learn is maybe the wrong word, but like, no, I think it's you probably get, the right con- You word. condition yourself to like, once the more you do it, like okay. anything, the more you start to understand patterns and the more you start to understand the way they write their clues. And my dad always said huh. that if you stick with it, you'll complete it. And oh, I used to be like, oh, as the week goes on, I can't really do it. And that was a story I told myself. I can't mm. do it come Friday, Saturday, Sunday or something. But um, Monday, it gets Tuesday, harder like, each day, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I've like, you know, it's become a bit of an obsession, but it's something I like I, I really love to do. And he was right. The more you do it, the more you start to really like use your brain a certain way and you can complete it. Um, you know, and, and the, you'll find things more. It's really not about being like people are like, oh. I'm not smart enough to do it. I hear people say that all the time. It's it's really not about intelligence at all. It's about like, it's about a pattern and a strategy or, or like just a way of doing it. It's, um, I don't know. It's a, it's like a method. And so you have to learn it and practice it. And so that is something that I feel like, um, 
my, my dad always thought kept his brain sharp and he was always worried about dementia. And so, and so am I, sure. <laughs> so I, um, I, I like doing it and it just, I don't know, it's kind of fun. It just feels satisfying. It kind yeah. of reminds me of what I used to like about math. There's like a way you can get it right. And then you move on. You don't have to think about it too much once right. you got it right. Yeah. Right. Do you think that if you would stop doing it for six months, is, would it be like riding a bike? Would you get back in and you'd remember the patterns and be able to do it again? I mean, there was a time in the past where I was doing them more. So I do think you can get rusty and forget some of those little, those little tricks and um, not tricks, but you know, those little types of clues that help you figure out the way they, the way they do things. But, um, no, nah, I think once you learn, you learn. Yeah. yeah. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. I, I, I had never thought about that as something to learn, but it makes total sense. I, 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 I don't do Wordle. I don't do any of those things. Um, I, I do, I have done, I mean, there are games I play solitaire and Sudoku and, um, Mahjong and things like that, but, um, I've never done those types of things. And I would have not thought necessarily that there would be something out to learn a way to do it so that you complete it. I think that's really fascinating. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And in some days, you know, are like a really quick and some days they do not. And I, it's like my bitch, I'm going to finish. What's the longest, <laughs> what's the longest it's ever taken you? Oh, like, you know, it, it tracks your time in the app, right? Oh, the New York interesting. Times app, so like, yeah. it'll tell you. So the longest was probably, but I mean, it's not like I sat there for three hours straight, but it was probably right. three hours of my time. And one day I, I went back to it and then went back to it. And then like, I had a whole word wrong. So then I had to redo, oh. you know things like that. Oh, no. But then it just becomes kind of like, I'm going to do this. Right. You're going to tackle it. That's hilarious. Yeah. I love it. So, so that brings you joy. And, and as you said, it is <laughs> the face you just made and, the, and uh, there, and there's the challenges yes. for sure. Um, I think that there is when was the last time you learned something? I guess this is what I want to ask. When was the last time you learned something and you didn't find it joyful? <laughs> well, in this, in this time, in the span of time, I was thinking about it, but then I was like, well, I better have something to say on this pod. And so, I, you know, I, I, I remember sometime in my thirties, late or mid thirties, I learned ukulele because I'd always play hmm. piano and it was like a coworker, her, her therapist challenged her to do something totally just different. That was going to be social and about learning something new. So she brought in like a, an instructor and got a whole group of people to learn ukulele. And then she had us perform at some like senior living centers. It was really cute. And that was fun for me because, you know, four strings and you know, it just like, it just became like a really fun social thing. And I felt like I got really good at it. I would play for my kids. And I honestly, I walked by my ukulele. I'm like, do I remember any of that? So I picked it back up and then it just made me want to try the guitar because no one's been around, mm. you know, Peter's been like, there's been guitars here, but you know, they're all the guitar players, Brendan and Peter and a little bit Griffin with the bass. So I like got the most basic book that like was Peter's when he first learned. And I like, you know, tried to like, I mean, it was like, um, what was it? It was like a chorus from um, Creedence Clearwater Revival. What's the one that's like, there's a oh, bad moon on the rise. Oh, right? yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah, I yeah. see that. So I li yeah. literally just like, and it frustrated the hell out of me. I mean, I did it, but like I was, I just kind of want to put it down and my fingers hurt. And I was like, I know, I know, I know that I'm going to have to like do this over and over to feel anything good about it. I remember that from ukulele, but it just was like, I just want to be good at it right now. <laughs> well, there, I and mean, that's just it, right? Like if there is no, <laughs> if you don't find joy in something, you're never just really good at it right out of the gate. Right. And right. so you have to, there has to be some sense of, I think, especially as an adult, you know, it's one thing when you're going through grade school and high school, and then if you choose to go to college, like those are, okay, there's going to be things that you, you want to get a means to an end. But then when you're actively choosing to decide to learn something, there has to be joy in it or, or you're going to set it down. And it does take time. I mean, it, whether it's a mental or a physical thing, you have to build calluses. You have to, yeah. you have to rebuild the calluses on your finger if you're going to play guitar, you know, yes. yeah. um, and, or the calluses in your brain, if it's learning the tricks and, and tips around, uh, crosswords and so forth. Yeah. So will you go back to it or, or will you just go back to ukulele? I think I'll go back to it. I mean, yeah. I think I'm, I, I've said this to you recently, like, I feel like in life right now, I, 
I feel like I have so much going on that if I have any time for something, I kind of want to read or chill mm-hmm. or get outside. But fall usually seems like they're like things get into their routine and I, and you know, I don't, don't have that other job anymore. So like, I feel like I, I might protect some time to either go back and have more fun playing piano or pick up the mm. guitar. So I, I, I definitely promised myself just some playing of an instrument is going to be happening this fall. And I, I will stick to that. Um, one thing I thought about learning this summer, but the timing didn't work and I may do it is um, comedy, like stand up comedy. Oh, I remember learning you saying how that. to yeah. like write a set and perform in front of people, which terrifies me. But it also has always terrified me in a teasing way that makes me think I'm supposed to do it. You know, even if it's just once and I bomb, like, I, you know, just there's something about it that's just sort of tantalizing me. So there's those things. But I will say this, like this is coming up for me listening to this. I don't know if it's like, this is a little bit too personal or shadow society, but there is something that I noticed about my kids that ended up being true of Brendan and I, which is we don't, we don't want to be bad at something and feel bad about ourselves or get laughed mm-hmm. at. Like that's a little child part of, you know, Brendan and I both had that in common, but when we saw it in our kids, we were like, Oh, that like, we don't want to hand that to them. Yeah. We want to start modeling, doing things badly as we learn them, you know, like, yeah. and, and, um, but that is like being the youngest and, you know, trying soccer for the first time. I wasn't good at first. My siblings were great. Like they were like, you know, but were the they? The team. they were from like, the get go that I don't know. See, that's my point, right? What like, I know is when, once I started playing soccer, my sister was the most feared player in the league. <laughs> so, right. but she wasn't the minute she walked on the pitch. Probably not, but she probably had some natural stuff like, you know, and, but there is this feeling of like, it's not true. And I don't even feel this way, but there is some, there was some early learned belief that like you shouldn't do things unless you're good at them, but like, how are you going to get good at them unless you try? Well, that's and just it. So, so it's interesting. Like the learning part does have, it, it, this is just such a great topic for me. It's so it's such great timing because I'm watching my kids like, you know, in different parts of their life, try new things. And they're really grateful that we encourage them to do that. Mm-hmm. And they're really grateful that, you know, we normalized sometimes you're not going to be good at things. That's okay. Yeah. Like you don't have to be great at everything. And, um, and you know, we haven't always done that well, but I, I, I think we have finally in a way that they're like, like Peter, you know, tried to do a stand up comedy thing when he was a freshman. He's like, I was terrible, but it was just fun to, to try out like, you know, or, or an improv. It was an improv thing. Mm. And I was like, that doesn't even make sense. You would try out. You hate surprises. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I know, but um, although he's since said, I do love surprises, but the, the point being like, I, I think that what's interesting about this is learning something new means not feeling good at something. Mm. And so I wonder if sometimes we don't, we, we stick it to our lanes and then we don't try new things because we're just trying to get good at the one thing, but like, it's so important because, you know, there's always like, there's the, what we know now about neuroplasticity and neuro pathways that learning things is actually keeping our brains really, really active. It's really good for our, you know, our neurodevelopment, but also like our nervous system when we're like activating parts of our brains and our, even our bodies physically, depending on what you're learning that you don't usually use, it's going to kind of keep everything more vibrant. Well, I think it's interesting because as a business coach, um, you know, sometimes most of the time I'm talking to people about building their business, but occasionally I'm talking to clients in, in more in their career. Like they're looking to take the next step in their career or they're changing jobs and they want the support and so forth around that. And it is fascinating to me when I, and it all it happens almost every single time I talk to somebody, like they get into the new job. And they think they're supposed to be great at it right away. And I'm like, dude, like there's a six, at least a six month learning curve of any job you do. Nobody, but you walk into a room full of people doing your same job who've been doing it for a long time or longer than you. And you think everybody was good at this the minute they walked in the door. Nobody's good at anything the first time they try something. It just, it's not, it's, and, and, but I think we actively have to remind ourselves of that. And especially if, that feeling makes you want to leave that thing. Like, you know, if I, I I mean, if I, if I gave up doing Russian right now, I mean, like I, again, I can't, I can probably say, thank you. I have an apple. (laughs) Probably the only sense. And I've been doing this for 226 days as of right now, you know, it's, it's literally, 
I know Yablica is Rapple, and I know Spasibo is thank you. I know of cats I mean, and dogs, but I minored like, in French, and I, I still laugh at like the first thing that comes to me is Je vais aller sans voiture. Like I go to school by car. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can, I can actually figure it out and do it, but it's funny that it's like the high school sentences that come to you first and sometimes only. <laughs> oh, totally. And I, and so, but the point is when you're on, when you're learning anything new, there are going to be days like there are, Liam said to me a couple of weeks ago, because obviously we're both doing it on Duolingo and, and we are friends on Duolingo. So he can see what, what I'm doing and I can sometimes see what he's doing or whatever. And he said, I forget how he said it, but he's like something somewhere on Duolingo. They told me you haven't had a perfect, a perfect uh, day in a while. And I was like, well, that's because I've been doing it for 220 days or whatever. Like I've been doing it for, it gets harder. I also learned that I have to kind of do it first thing in the morning. If I do it in the middle of the afternoon, I, it's like, my brain doesn't work. It, it can't, but early in the morning when it's fresh, I can, I do it much better. If I, there are definitely days where it takes me longer, where I have not a great score. Sure, I could give up, especially because this is just for fun. But there's something I, I know I've got to ride that roller coaster of learn a few things, go back a little bit. Like it's just learning things is not linear. And it's not even roller coastery. It's it's a circle and around and up and deep and up and all over the place, you know. And And if you can go into learning something new with that understanding... It's a lot, it, it just will become, there'll be an ease to it, I suppose, is the word totally. I'm looking for. Totally, you know? totally. Um, I love that. And I, and it's comforting to hear you say that because it's a great reminder. I, I mean, I, I know that I was thinking about, you know, the things you learn because you have to, you don't think, I didn't think about, like you said, like we learned, we, we wanted to do a pot, we learned how. Yeah. I had to learn about taxes and I got really pissed and frustrated that we have to like, like that it's so complicated and like yeah. that, you know, to have an LLC and figure out that because you're in California, we have to pay California, even though it's set up here, like all that stuff, but I'm determined to learn it. Cause I don't want to always have to pay someone else. Right. But right. it is like, it really sucks when you have to learn something that you don't even care about or like, I don't care about that part of it. I just want to do this, you know, I just yeah, 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 yeah. That is humbling to me and I can get into a place and I'm saying this for people listening. I'm not trying to like <laughs> expose all my insecurities, but because I think this is true of a lot of people, like I start I, and we hear women doing this all the time. I start to do this thing going, maybe I'm just not as smart as I used to be. Maybe I don't learn the way I used to because I was a really good student. I was super sharp. I picked things up all the time. And there are things like, you know, you know, when we, when we had like new data, um, what do we call it? Like like new data, uh, what, like when we would switch programs that had data at HCI. Oh, like oh yeah. Databases, well, we like databases. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would be like asking, okay, wait, is this, and I, I ask a lot of questions, which is not a bad thing to do when you're learning something new, but it, I was also telling myself like, why aren't you getting this? Why aren't you getting this? Like I was just kind of hard on myself through all of it. Every time I have to learn something new that's technical, I have to resist going, you, you know, you don't understand this to yourself instead of going, I'm just learning it. it. I'm learning it and it is something I'll get used to. And it's just clunky right now. Yeah. And so I'm saying that for the benefit of everyone, because I hear women doing that all the time. Like, I'm just not tech this, or I don't know how to do this. Like there are a bunch of dummy guides and YouTube videos for just about everything. And if you're patient enough, you really can learn anything. You can learn to do like any dance, you know, craze out there because there's literally steps by step videos out there. So be careful what you're telling yourself. And I, I relate to that because I can do that too. Like, oh, I can't learn that. Yes, I can. I can learn. I, you, yeah. You can learn anything you want to learn. I mean, that goes back to the neuroplasticity, but there has to be, um, I, I think unless, especially at this age, even if it's something you have to learn, if you can find the joy in it, it's not just a means to an end, right? So the joy in you learning the taxes, quote unquote, is it's money we don't have to spend, you know, right. but by the same token, side note, you know, my time is money. So if it takes a shit ton of time and takes you away from your family, it's well worth spending the money, you know? So that also can be a learning that, yes, oh, I thought I was going to do this and ultimately it doesn't make sense for me. Um, I also think there is something, and now I cannot, and this is hilarious. I can't remember the name of the pod where we talked about this, but I do think also, depending on how old you are listening to this pod, be, give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. As we get older, 
It's not that we can't learn something, but it does take different, it takes a different amount of time. It takes a different amount of energy than Liam deciding to go on. Like I just asked him to create something for us for the retreat and I, mm -hmm. like he figured it out, you know, mm -hmm. probably took him two minutes. It would take me a hell of a lot longer. It's not right. because I'm stupid. It's not because I'm old. It's not because I can't learn anymore. But our brains work differently as we get older. It, our, I, we talked about in, in whatever pod that was called that I can't remember, um, wh where you know where our brains are not about innovation at this point. It's about wisdom. And so sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, when we're learning something new, we have to remind ourselves that we've learned new things in the past. We right. I, we can do it again. It might take a little bit more time. That is okay. It does. It's not a fault. It is just a mechanism of being in our 50s or 60s or 40s or whatever it might be. We're not 18 years old where everything comes to us much quicker with less pain. <laughs> true. Oh my gosh. So true. <sighs> um, it's funny that you just said that, like our brains are more about wisdom now. My mom says that all the time. I have wisdom. I'm here to teach. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, we have know, like to own that, you know, that we're, yes, we can learn new things, but we are at a stage where we're also here to guide and teach. You know, yeah. I mean, that is, that is, that's the, the part of our journey that we're in right now, but it also doesn't mean we can't learn something new. No, that's true. I love it. Um, do you want to talk about like just tips we have for, you know, learning something new? Sure. Yeah. You know, I will say for me, part of it is, um, I, I, I guess I've said it. it, it is the joy. Like there is something about Duolingo it's gamified. You know, yeah. it doesn't take very long. Um, you know, it, it takes as long as you decide to take, but to to have it every, to, to do the little bit every day, it's maybe five minutes at most, you know, one, mm -hmm. two minutes if you're going fast, if you're having a good day. So that the, the gamifying, even if it's not whatever you're learning isn't gamified, if you can gamify it for yourself, um, I think that can be really, really helpful in learning. I I didn't realize how much I love a streak, <laughs> but it, you yes. know, I will figure out a way to do it every day, even if it takes me 10 minutes, because I don't want to break my streak. I'm very I, excited about that. I feel that same way about the crosswords is getting the streak really, right. really helps. And the wordle and the um, connections. I do all three. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, yeah, some practical tips, right? Um, one effective method. If you, if you feel like, oh, if you're inspired in hearing this, or like, it's been while since I learned something new, I want to say to you what Lisa and Beth said to me, like you probably are, you probably are learning new things, but maybe you haven't thought about it that way. But if you want to kind of get excited about something, set a goal, like set a clear goal, like by yeah. Christmas, I want to be able to sit down on the piano and play some Christmas carols, you know, like, what is that? Yeah. Or um, I want to learn how to um, refinish a table, right. Or like something like that. Like those kind of things are, they, they, they really can be so specific and so random, yeah. but like having a goal, it, like progress equals joy. So yeah. having a goal and then knowing like, well, I learned this part of it today that gets me one mm. step closer actually brings joy and motivation. So yeah. It. So breaking it down into smaller, more manageable goals. I mean, when you talk about a goal, like to me, it, it was, it makes me laugh to be like, it's whatever, whenever this is coming out in September and I'm going to learn a Christmas carol by Christmas that feels overwhelming to me. So it's either break it down, but also I think when you're setting goal, make sure it is realistic and achievable going back to right. the sort of smart goals, ways of things, because the last thing you want to do when you're trying to learn something new is to make yourself feel worse about it. Right. Right. I mean, that's, and so make sure that whatever you're choosing, you know, maybe it is just Good King Wenceslas or something mm -hmm. really easy. Yes, no, it's you know? true. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It's funny. I think about like learning how to crochet. Mm. A lot of things I did, like, I mean, there's a bunch of things. I laugh about this a lot. I may have laughed about it here. There's a bunch of things that I learned how to do in my twenties and thirties that I, once I learned them, I did them. I never needed to do them again. Like, oh, that's interesting. Crocheted a, a couple gorgeous blankets, never did it again. Like, you know, as, uh, give them as gifts, like this is impressive. Okay. I did that. Like, you know, I had to build a shelf and paint it for my nephew and thought I would do that for all my nieces and nephews and my kids. Nope. Just the one learned how yeah. to make bagels. They were pretty good, but I'll buy them next time. <laughs> it was just, so but I think things. that's valuable though. It's yeah. valuable to know. I'm a one and done. <laughs> or no, no one hit wonder. One hit wonder. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like it was a goal. I accomplished it. 
And there's no shame in not doing it again either. It's like, true. I also think that's kind of cool that it's just like, okay, I can also buy bagels. <laughs> yeah. That was a lot of work. <laughs> okay. But again, once you have the goal, it's it's making sure that you're you're breaking it down into very doable, achievable, Darren hates this word, but chunks, right? right. Like it's no, just true. making sure that it's, and, and as you said, every time, you achieve one of those steps that gets you that much closer. It's also motivating to keep going because at some point you do kind of get to a point of no return maybe and you want to, you know, you don't want to go back. But celebrate those achievements as you go along. No, true. That's true. I was just thinking about things like learning how to surf or learning how to scuba dive and getting certified, those things like you can't get really consistent with those. Cause that was the next thing I was going to say. Another step, mm. another tip is to stay consistent, but some of those, yeah. you only have access to them at certain times. Um, so it's nice to like set goals and then like t- try to get back to them, like schedule them in if you can, or, mm-hmm. you know, figure out other things that are complimentary that like maybe it's skateboarding, if you want to learn s- surfing or something like that. I don't know. Um, but being consistent really, really helps like regular practice. You're never going to get the calluses unless you practice, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. So even if it's just a few minutes a day, really lead to significant progress over time. Um, yeah. It's true that you might sit next to someone who can pick things up faster than you, but you'll end up going farther. It's the tortoise of the hair thing. If you practice more, if yeah. you and, are consistent. And I think there is, do not look to the people around you as the that they're, what they're doing is what you should be doing. You know, we talk about this all the time with our clients around the imposter syndrome or compare and despair, you know, oh, this person's doing the same thing as me and look how much farther ahead they are. They must have hit the ground running. Says who? I mean, that's why I was asking you about your sister. I mean, I, I bet you if you ask your sister, she would tell you that her first time out on the soccer pitch didn't go as well as you think. But you found her, you know, you got in there when she was, already succeeding at it yeah and also that's the thing too where even when you're in success we're all self-criticizing you know and so you i wouldn't i i am certain i would have to imagine that there are times that simone biles does a a, uh anything you know whether it's a floor routine or or whatever it might be and she gets off and thinks of all the things she did wrong and all I mean, we she see... fell off she fell off the beam and yeah. you know so like she's she just won like best and she is arguably best in the world no and question. i think that was a wonderful example yeah and and it didn't she didn't throw a hissy fit i mean embrace the mistakes right i i think when you to me a mistake is is something that actually does accelerate the learning because when you realize you've made a mistake and you figure out how that happened, it's like you will not do that again, most likely. So to me, a mistake actually accelerates the learning versus throwing your hands up and be like, fuck it, I'm not doing this. Right. Yeah. You know? That's a really good point. I mean, yeah, we always say this to people who are learning how to like build a business, right? And yeah. learning how to get clients. There's one, like you, you keep saying you're going to fail. You know what? There's one way you're going to fail is by quitting. <laughs> yep. The only That's way the to only fail. The only way you're going to fail is like by stopping doing it. So, yep. yeah. So, how do you stay motivated in when you're learning something and it gets tough? That's a good question. I mean, again, for me, the, the only thing that's front of center is Duolingo and it's just fun and it's gamified. Um, whew, when have I not? When have I? Like, what's your goal with it? just have fun or to have like a full conversation with her parents? Or? Yeah, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to have a full conversation with her parents. It just isn't going to happen. You might be like me, a glass of wine in and I can speak French much well, better you know, it's, <laughs> with, it's a lot less, with a lot less insecurity. <laughs> That's true. That could be true. You know what? I I don't know when I'm going to, I don't know when I'm going to see Irina again, but Liam actually said to me, he's like, you know, I bet you if Irina spoke to you, she, you probably would catch more. I mean, I have not done that yet on the app. You can, or you're speaking the words instead of just listening and, and, you know, typing them out or whatever. Um, so maybe that should be my next goal is uh, like try to have some sort of conversation with Irina. But again, I, you know, I now fully understand where her mom is coming from because it is nerve wracking to speak someone's language with them that you are learning. Now, Olga has been here for many, many, many years. Um, but I, again, I just think it's it's so interesting to me that she worries about that. I mean, she 
she's an actress. Like she's out there all the time talking to people, but I, I, you know, it's late. It's her daughter's boyfriend's parents. So I guess there's an added level there to some extent. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I, what I would have done. I guess if I'm thinking about training for something, that would be that, not that I was learning it per se. Although I guess if I was writing, like when I did the, the AIDS ride a couple different years, you know, there was definitely, especially in my first time, 500 miles, like I had to learn how to manage food and, and energy and drinks and make all that sort of thing. And, and that was certainly hard. I, I think I'm probably just someone that just keeps on keeping on, you know, yeah, I, I don't, there might come a time where I don't want to do it anymore. And I don't prolong the agony if I just decide I don't want to do it anymore. But if it's something that I have a, a goal and end game in mind, I probably just keep on keeping on. Yes. And we said this already, but it's really important. Like it's so important to celebrate the small victories. Yeah. You obviously learned that at Weight Watchers. You knew that before you've done that a lot since like celebrating. And, and like I said, the, the little rituals I have with people when things are good, you know, yeah, if you can that. celebrate that, then there's a lot more momentum to take you forward. Um, yeah. Well, you're talking about rituals. We, we, re we recorded these out of order, but we will be talking about rituals next week. And you have a lot of really good tips around that. And I do think the ritual part of this, as you're learning the self rituals, um, to keep yourself motivated are incredibly important. So listen to next yeah. week's pod yeah, sorry. as well. <laughs> I, did oh, just, I, I did just totally mess that up. I did that um, one and next week's I referenced this week. So <laughs> is there anything like that you've, ever learned new that like surprised you like like I didn't know I could do this or like do, mm. do you have something you ever remember doing like that didn't know I could do this gosh I don't think so I mean I suppose um yeah I, I guess I could I, I would say yoga to some extent I mean that might sound but I um I really appreciate what my the way my body can move now that even when I was younger, probably couldn't, but because I've been cons not consistent, but persistent and mm -hmm. done yoga over the years, like, you know, I'm, I'm for 55 years old, especially now that I have a new hip, I'm pretty bendy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, <Pretty bendy. laughs> so I think, you know, that, um, I think that that still surprises. And I think, again, it's as I age, I'm, I'm surprised at how flexible I can still be. And I, and I celebrate that and I, and I get the benefit of re-celebrating again because of the things I can do now that I couldn't, that I didn't realize I couldn't do when I, when my hip heart, you know? So there's a, there's something almost daily that I'm like, holy shit, I can do this now. And it's might be as simple as actually making a crosswalk, <laughs> like changing but that's that is pretty fun and I and so to, again to your point of making sure you celebrate those moments you know I've been with the kids and decided to cross uh, uh, on a crosswalk that was timing down and Charlotte even pushes like you could never do that before I'm like oh you know look at this this is awesome that's awesome. You haven't seen me since I've got physically. Seen I know. I, I, I'm, I really wanted to, if you recall, I really wanted to come down for your birthday yeah. mainly because I just want to like, I want to go dancing or something with you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go do something really spry. Yeah. Um, what about you? Um, I would say with this real, you know, with this lovely reflection that people have like of all the new things I've tried to take on. The thing that I think about is cooking. Cause I, mm. I can get in the lane and, and, you know, when people, I can get a little lazy because people are like, you're such a good cook. I love when you cook. And so I can cook all the yeah. same things that I normally cook, but I can get bored with that. And because my kids are foodies and they kind of like to learn things, I've been learning new, like different types of cuisines. And, mm -hmm. um, and the truth is honestly, what I'm really good at is, is finding like amazing recipes and then like altering them because I'll, I will not go to the store. I'll just use what I have. And I have good instincts and confidence around that. Nice. So I'm really good at that. I'm really good at taking easy things and making them delicious. So actually complicated multiple steps things. I don't do a lot of like lasagna. That's a lot of work just to eat it. Right. Um, but, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not the biggest lasagna fan. So if I was, oh, I was I if there's more. a perfect example, like, yeah, it's not that many steps, but, but like okay. a bechamel, but a bechamel sauce or something like that. Like, the, I mean, just to, I, again, this was my thinking if it takes a lot of steps, but I actually make really good enchiladas. I make, I can make a really good um, lasagna, but one of the things I just always thought was 
like something I wouldn't be really good at was crepes. And um, mm. Miles and I got into that and I was like, it's just, you just have to learn it. You learn right. it, you get the right pan and it's actually so freaking easy. And um, so it's the same with just about anything like a souffle or, um, or, you know, um, things like um, braising, you know, meats mm. and vegetables and stuff like that. It, it It's stuff that requires patience. I like cooking versus baking because I can be a lot more artistic with it. You can be, yeah. you can kind of play with it and use your instincts. Baking, I really believe if you don't follow it and you try and use your instincts, you are going to like have an expensive bomb and, yes. it, and it really could go badly. So I think learning how to bake with some technique is also something that's kind of fun that Miles and I've been doing. So that's fun. Um, and there's a lot of trial and error that like, there's a lot of like, whoo, you know, we saw this recipe on a TikTok or something and right. we tried it like this sucks. This is terrible. Um, so I think it can be fun because it's something we can learn together. But I think you just hit on something that is part of a, as a good tip around learning something new, make sure you have the right tools. Yeah. Right. So I true. mean, make so sure true. you are setting yourself up for success. I remember going back to, you mentioned Weight Watchers. I remember there was a time of Weight Watchers where um, it was when Jennifer Hudson was our spokesperson and she had a very specific leader. And this leader um, came out of New York City and she kind of became a little bit of a celebrity in our own right because she had helped Jennifer Hudson and blah, blah, blah. And so she wrote a book and she wrote, a, and it was around setting goals and, and so forth. And I'll, I just, I loved this story. And she was talking about how, and this also goes to the small steps piece of it. She really did want to learn yoga and, but she was on the, she was traveling all the time. And so she realized she would have to figure out a yoga practice that she could use, that she could do on her own. Cause she wasn't going to have time at, at every stop, you know, on the publicity tour or whatever to go to yoga. And so her first step in deciding what kind of yoga she wanted to learn was to research all the different types of yoga and decide which one is portable and I can do on my own and so forth. Right. Um, and, and so I, th I think about, you know, setting yourself, doing the, doing the research can be part of the learning something new, you know? And I think a lot of times we, we poo poo that like, oh, I haven't started yet. Well, if you have started to figure out, okay, if I'm going to, set up a business or I'm going to learn how to cook crepes or I'm going to learn how to do yoga, making sure you have yourself set up for success environmentally, perhaps also mentally, emotionally, all of that, <laughs> making sure, oh, we don't know. I don't know what that laughs about. I'll, I'll tell you in a sec. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, it always worries me when I say something and you burst out laughing because I'm like, uh-oh, what did I just trigger? <laughs> Sorry, I did not mean to stop your train of thought. You're right. No, no. Mentally, like everything, you do need those things. Here's what I was thinking. I thought you were just, because you, you, you're also really talented and so natural at this that you can do a couple things at once. So I thought you were also reminding me like I need the right headphones because- Oh my gosh, me learning how to do record a podcast and like the amount of headphones and microphones that I've gone through. So I thought you were pointing to your headset, like need the right fucking tools. Like I thought you it's just a jab, like a fun jab at me. <laughs> First off, I would, okay, so here's okay. So that's why I laughed because it was just like you it looked like you <laughs> Okay, but here's what's so funny. This is I think that this goes right along. You worry about that stuff way more than I than I think you need to. Like you and and so it is about the stories we tell ourselves, right? I also like what, have like probably impossibly high standards about how this should sound, but and yeah. that could be part of it, right? Like and so real going back to being having real being realistic about this, right? Mm -hmm. Like there have been times and we've talked about this before where I have thought, you know, sometimes it's interesting. We uh, you and I had this conversation after the sometimes we have a topic and we're so animated about it that we're just blah, 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 blah. And I get done. And my immediate thought is, God, did even that even make any sense? Because so much of this is conversational and it's like you and I are just talking. We just happen to be recording it on Zoom as well. And and so sometimes I think, and you almost always go to, it was my fault. And I'm always like, I, what? what it's not and oh, because I, mainly because i think the sound on my end is bad the or sound my, or my whatever screen or, is freezing or right something. right right yes. right and 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 it's funny to me because i first off i don't do that to myself but i also never think that about you like yeah. if something hasn't gone right it's usually administrative and it either we both made the mistake or whatever it was it doesn't matter so i just think it's as you are learning something new 
make sure that you are not telling stories along the way. True. No, it's such a good point. I have a goal of like, cause I can write our talking points yeah. and then I could, I like, I can either sound like I'm reading or I'll get so into the conversation and then I might lose track of something. And then I Me feel too, like that totally. it. Yeah. Um, I remember Stacey and Carrie, who we, who we both know were incredibly gifted on stage. They told me pretty far in, it wasn't even until one of the last events we were at pretty far into the time that I knew them. They're like, we're trying to learn how to not have a script when we're on there, how to not have cue cards. We're trying to learn that. And I was like, isn't that amazing that they're like, they're already so good at however they do it. You would never know. I yeah. mean, obviously we know because we would be behind the scenes and we'd see their, their screens up, but still right. it, it's so cool that people are constantly leveling up. And that's where I'm at with this is that yeah. that's a goal. I want to level up, have the talking points, you know, incorporated. And yet at the same time, we're doing pretty freaking well, considering how much you and I have going on in our lives and we come yeah. in and we do this. And so it's always good to remember the, like, but it's because it's well. fun. It's because it is. It is. But again, that goes back to the fun, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we, by the, by the end of this year, we will have a hundred episodes done. We just, our, our editor just reflected back to us not too long ago, like, oh my God, you guys are so far ahead of the game, but that's because we love this, you know? Mm -hmm. So again, yes, we've had to learn some things. We had great teachers with cash flow podcasting and don't get me wrong, but then we have taken this and, and continued to keep it going at the high level that we want and the standards that we have because it's fun. If, if this yeah. sucked, we'd probably stop. We this know lots of people me. who have. That's true. It kind of reminds me of that thing I shared way back, which was, you got to be smart to be lazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, we stockpile these partly because mm -hmm. we have a lot of fun being together and we get this like burst of ideas, yeah. but also because we want time to do other stuff. We have a retreat yeah. coming up. We will probably be planning the next retreat. We may be doing other things together. Like we, if we can do that, like it, it is part of like, we, we're learning how to do it so we can free ourselves up. Yeah. For the, whatever. Steps. So we have space. So yeah. 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 Um, okay. Anything else you want to say about this? No. Do we have a song? We do. We do. We had a couple of choices, but we went with the woman as we do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is exactly the right song, but I do love this song. Uh, it, and the title's perfect, which is You Learn from Alanis Morissette. Mm -hmm. um, and actually the, the lyrics I chose, I think are exactly right. So it says, I recommend biting off more than you can chew to anyone. I certainly do. I recommend sticking your foot in your mouth at any time. Feel free. Throw it down. The caution blocks you from the wind. Hold it up to the rays. You wait and see when the smoke clears. You live, you learn. You love, you learn. You cry, you learn. You lose, you learn. You bleed, you learn. You scream, you learn. That is a perfect song mm, now that I read I the lyrics it. better. I love that song. I love Alanis. Love her. I love her too. <laughs> I love, yeah. Um, she has a musical, right? She has a musical. Yeah, I probably won't thing. see that. I'm not a big fan mm -hmm. of those types of things, but yes. Yeah, she no, does. No, I, I just was trying to figure out what she's doing right now, but that's cool. I love that she's doing yeah, that. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's got jagged so, little pill. I hope this was, if, if, I hope if you're listening, you're inspired, or at least I hope you feel seen if you're like me and kind of, you know, hard on yourself around these things. But also I'm here to tell you that like, there's nothing more fun than, like stretching your brain in a new way and, and bursting through that little insecurity of doing things well. Cause that's never what it's about. It's all always about like learning something new, using a new part of your brain and having fun with yourself, finding the things that, that like really bring you closer to admiring that, Hey, I took on something new. So I hope that mm. you feel inspired to the joy and the challenges of that. And again, if you think like Carrie did, and, and really even me, like, again, I did not put two and two together until you said it a couple of weeks ago that this was the reason you did it was because of me learning Russian. Take a minute and look at your life and recognize you've probably learned things, whether you had to, whether you chose to. Going to the gym and doing a new exercise class, you learned how to do that. You didn't know how to do it the first time you walked in that door. And you loved it and you kept going back and now you're good at it. And maybe you went from the back of the room to the front of the room. Like instead of assuming you haven't learned anything new, maybe take a, take stock. And that will remind you that the next time you want to learn something new, you've already done it. It's not, it doesn't matter how old you are. It might take longer, whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, it does. It keeps our minds active, our spirits curious, and certainly 
our lives rich with new experiences for sure. Yes. So yeah, thanks for listening today. I, as always, we would love to hear something you're learning. It's, it's really inspiring to hear other people learning new things and, and it gives us good ideas. If you have any questions or want to share your own, reach out to us, come to our social media pages on Instagram or Facebook if you want, or just send us an email. Um, it's in the show notes. Yeah. Is it's it? the yeah. things we know podcast 23 at Gmail. At Gmail. Yeah. That's it's going to restart it. Yeah, that's the year we started. I can never remember. Some things are pod, some things are podcast, but the uh, email is definitely things we know podcast 23 at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. I also want to say we've gotten a few new topics that are going to be recording and it has come directly from listeners. So if there is something, I mean, Carrie and I are, we're, 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 got the year mostly planned out, but we have a couple of spaces and we're already thinking about 2025 and season three. So if there is something you want us to talk about um, and research and bring to the forefront, please, please, please email us at the things we know podcast 23 at gmail.com and we will do it. Excellent. Until next time, keep learning and stay curious. Yay. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.